Hello everyone! Pag-usapan naman natin sa video na to ang estimation of population mean when the population standard deviation or the sigma is unknown. Without further ado, let's get this lesson started! I-recall natin yung process ng estimation kung saan out of this entire population represented by the circle, kumukuha lang tayo ng representative to stand for the sample kung saan dun tayo kukuha ng statistic. We will compute for the mean, the standard deviation, and other statistic. Out of these results, tayo ay mag-estimate ng population parameters. Sa ating first part, nabanggit na rin natin yung pinagkaiba ng point estimate, which is always sample mean, because it is the specific numeric value that will best estimate the population mean. On the other hand, yung ating interval estimate naman, ito yung range of values na ginagamitan ng population mean at ng concept ng confidence interval. At sa video na nga ito, ang pag-uusapan natin na situation ay hindi given yung sigma or yung population mean. Kapag ganito, hindi z-table yung gagamitin natin. Instead, we will use the t-distribution table. The t-distribution table is quite similar sa ating z-table. The only difference ay in terms of their curve, mas scattered or mas layo-layo yung values ng t-distribution, kaya mas mataba yung curve niya. At ito yung ating gagamitin na interval estimate. If you will remember during our discussion ng part 1, itong part na to ay yung parang margin of error. Iba lang yung involved, again, hindi na z, instead t-value na yung involved. At yung s dito na dati ay population standard deviation, naging sample standard deviation na lang. So, ito yung mga legend sa formula na ito. Sa left side, yung mean ay naka-subtract lang together with the margin of error. Ito yung margin of error natin. At yung sa kabilang side naman, naka-add yung margin of error sa mean. Oh, by the way, in getting t value here for alpha over 2, we will take into consideration the concept of the degrees of freedom, which is always n minus 1. So, let's move to the first example. Dito sa ating unang example, may 55 randomly selected adults na nabili daw ng books for leisure reading and they were asked uh, how many or how much do they spend on books per year. This survey led to 2,000 pesos as the mean and the standard deviation is 250. It is important to note here that 250 is the sample standard deviation. It's not the standard deviation of the entire population. And then we have to determine the 99% confidence interval for the population mean. So, hindi na tinatanong yung ating point estimate. Pero kailangan pa rin natin siya. So we have to list down the given and solve for t value for alpha over 2. So ang ating x bar or ang ating mean that is 2,000 pesos. Yung ating standard deviation that is 250. Ang n natin is sample size. We have 55. And for the degrees of freedom, this is n minus 1, 55 minus 1 or 54. Our CI, our confidence interval, is 99% or 0 0.99. And of course, our alpha, hindi pa rin nagbabago, it's 1 minus CI or 1 minus 0 0.99. This is 0 0.01. Kapag na-complete na natin itong set of values na ito, what we will do next is we will divide the alpha, which is 0 0.01, into 2 tulad nung ginagawa natin sa previous video. Thus, the alpha over 2 here is 0 0.005. After nating makuha si alpha over 2, malalaman na natin yung t value. Ang itatake into consideration natin ay itong alpha over 2 at itong 54. So, this is an example of a t-table. 
yung ating leftmost column ay yung ating degrees of freedom. And then our topmost row, ito yung ating alpha over 2 or yung ating critical value. At yung body, doon natin makikita yung T value. Again, ang ating alpha na hinahanap or yung ating alpha over 2 is 0 0.005. Itong part na ito. And ang ating degrees of freedom is 54. So, dito pala tayo sa kabilang part. And then we have here 54. Nagtama sila sa 2.670. So, yun yung ating T value. Now that we already know the T value, we move to the next part. Gagamitin na natin siya directly sa substitution. So, ang mean natin is 2,000. Minus ang t-value natin is 2.670. Ang s natin dito ay 250 all over the square root of n, 55. And then of course the mu. And then copy lang natin yung mga term but this time we use addition. Then we can directly solve this in our calculator. For the lower limit, we have 2,000 minus 2.670 times the open parenthesis or open quantity 250 over the square root of 55. So, enter natin. We have 1,909.99 or 1909.99. Again, this is in terms of pesos. And for the other part naman, gawin lang nating addition. So we have 2,090.01. Again, in terms of pesos. So, to interpret this one, we are 99% sure that for a year, people or book lovers, those who use reading as one of their uh, pastime, spend 1,909.99 pesos to 2,090 pesos and 1 centavos to buy books. Let's move to the next part. For this guided example 2, meron naman tayong lifetime of batteries na approximately normal yung distribution and then we have a sample of 60. Ang mean nila ay 500 days and standard deviation of 61 days. This time, we need to construct a 98% naman, a confidence interval for the population mean. I'll give you 10 seconds to list down the different necessary given in order for us to determine the T value for alpha over 2. After 10 seconds, magre resume ako to reveal the correct answers. Ang mean natin dito is 500 days. Our standard deviation is 61, and our sample is 60 batteries. Degrees of freedom is always n minus 1, or in other words, it's 59. Our CI is 98%, or 0 0.98. That is why our alpha is 1 minus CI, or 0 0.02. Once we already know the alpha, we divide it to 2. Thus, our alpha over 2 is 0 0.01. Let's use these information, 59 na DF and 0 0.01, to 
to look for the t-value in the table. Again, it's 0 0.01 and BF59. So, gamit tayo ng green highlighter naman. Ito yung 0 0.01 at ang ating degrees of freedom ay 59. So, nag-intersect sila dito sa 2.391. So, we have 2.391. Let's move to the next slide. To substitute the following values to our formula. So we have 500 minus the T value of 2.391. Then we have here 61 all over 60 or the square root of 60. 500 ulit. Ang S natin ay 61 and then square root of 60. Let's use again our calculators for this. We have 500 minus 2.391, open parenthesis, 61 all over the square root of 60. Close parenthesis and then enter. We have 481.70. And then this is mean. Oh, by the way, this is in terms of days. And then for, for the next part, let's make it plus. We have 518.83. Again, in terms of days. So to interpret this, we are 98% sure that the lifetime of those batteries will be from 481.17 days until 518.83 days. Again, when dealing with conclusion, you have to include the confidence interval dahil pag naiba yung confidence interval, definitely iba na din yung ating answer for the interval estimate.